ASEAN. And this week, we're going to take you to a land that's famous for its coffee and also famous for this particular musical instrument, the gourd lute, which is said to be very much still a part of the soul of the Vietnamese people. Written records note that it originated back all the way in the 1700s based on the legend of a blind woman who helped found her family when her husband was away at war. It is one of the most intricate musical instruments ever created, requiring precision for both hands and fingers on its monochord single string chord. Well, we're going to take you into Vietnam right now to see how the gourd lute is being made and still very much part of their culture and community. Dao Sa Village is located in Dong Lo Commune, Ng Hoa District, in the southern tip of Hanoi. This is an over 200 years old famous craft village famous for making traditional Vietnamese musical instruments. Mercedes Carenzo, an Argentina girl, will learn to make the gourd lute under the guidance of artisan Dao Van Soat, the most experienced and famous artisan in Dao Sa village. First, we draw the frame using a sample. After cutting the wood with a machine, next we use a saw for finer cuts. Yes. Okay. <laughs> to produce a charming and smooth instrument, it is necessary to use a wood shaving machine. After finishing some parts of the lute, the makers out them together to form the sound box. The gourd lute has one big end and one smaller end. Its length often reaches around 110 centimeters, its height around 10.5 centimeters. On the bigger end, there is a piece of metal or a piece of animal bone called ngựa đàn. The string will go through this ngựa đàn and is tied to the machine head. On the smaller end, there is a rod made of wood or animal horns. The rod goes through a dried calabash half or a similarly shaped wooden item attached to the body. practice it for a while, we have time. A little bit, a little bit. It's hard. It's hard. It's not easy. <laughs> A quarterling string that plays. Even half of a gourd carries a heaven of melodies. The gourd lute is a unique instrument to Vietnam. The instrument has a single string, so it is also called the monochord zither. There are not written records that state the exact time and origin of the gold lute in Vietnam. Since the 11th century, the gold lute has been attached with some singing, the folk music of blind artists in North Vietnam.
At that time, the court lewd was to support singers or for players to perform alone. Later, the court lute went beyond the scope of some singing, but were used in other traditional music performances. With unique sounds, the court lute represent the soul of Vietnamese people, luring a number of artists. People all over the world are often curious about the instrument. They ask that why, with just one string, the instrument can produce magical and appealing sounds like this. The characteristic sounds are generated when the player lightly touches the string in several places with the heels of his hand, while at the same time plucking it with a plectrum made of bamboo, horn or plastic, which he holds in the same hand. The other hand varies the basic tensions of the string. By means of a long, flexible rod made of bamboo, this generates a bright, clear glissando sound when playing. Various techniques allow widely differing sounds and vibrato effects are also typical. The player infuses his heart and soul for his homeland, different parts of the country, into the Godelute melodies. You are listening to the sound of the Godelute made of bamboo and attached with an amplifier. With a view to introducing folk music to the public, in 2010, artist Huang Anh-Tu initiated the performing program for introducing and preserving traditional instruments in which the court lute was in focus. The performing program took place in the octagonal house behind King Li Thái Tổ Monument, Hanoi, every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday evening. For eight years, the performances have been ever more appealing to the audiences. Despite the hustle and bustle of modern life, the sound of the gold lute can bring Vietnamese people closer to traditional cultural values. Along with the traditional music, some young artisans also use gold lute to play in modern songs so as to bring this traditional instrument closer to the young generation. Now, there are many more Vietnamese parents who led their children to study the Go Lu. The life of the Go Lu has been continued within the contemporary music circle by young players. In addition to introducing the gold lute into music training schools in Vietnam, bringing it to the public is the best way to preserve the unique traditional instrument. sounds we now go to Brunei and this trip wouldn't be complete if we don't have a closer look at one of Brunei's most prized possessions the Gulintangan this musical instrument is often performed at weddings and most importantly to greet dignitaries and royal families our host has the story In Brunei Darussalam, the traditional music is still popular despite the existence of the modern ones on this program, Colors of ASEAN 2 from Brunei Darussalam, we proudly feature Gulintangan.
the real occasion when it is played varies. To the seasonal ceremony such as the Makan Tahun or the annual harvest festival, the melodious sound of Kuling Tangan is often associated with nobility and happiness. It also symbolizes heroism, thus played as an accompaniment when a Malay martial art known as Silat is demonstrated. is the lead instrument of the orchestra. Its role is so important that without its melody, the orchestra will not sound as pleasant. The kulintangan must also be positioned at the end of the player's leg. The eight small gongs are put inside the wooden boat structure known as langkungan. Normally, langkungan can measure up to a metre or two metres long. The small gongs can differ in thickness and size and are arranged in order, starting from the lowest notes to the highest ones. Of course, the art of playing gulingtangan requires focus, persistence as well as passion. The next instrument is the gong. The gong acts as an accompaniment to the rest of the melody. Tawa tawa played together with guling tangan functions like a bass, acts like a filler that makes the overall melody enjoyable to listen to. Another additional instrument played with guling tangan is known as chanang. Although chanang is not an important part of the orchestra, in some songs it complements the existing melody. The importance of gendang labik is similar to that of guling tangan. Apart from increasing the dynamic of the songs, it is also beaten to indicate the end of a traditional game or to mark the end of a song. Decades ago, there were concerns that the guling tangan melody will become extinct due to its limited range of notes. In 1971, with the support of the government and the guling tangan players, more pieces of gongs with various notes were introduced. Under the Ministry of Education, more than 15 schools have included guling tangan in their extracurricular programs. Students in secondary schools find it easier to access the instruments and learn more about them. They also get the opportunity to perform in school events and participate in inter-schools competitions organized annually by the Ministry. Country, population wise of about four to five hundred thousand people, Brunei, we move on to a landlocked nation in the middle of Southeast Asia, Laos. And this tiny nation that stems a story that takes us back through folklore and oral tradition some four thousand years, placing its existence that far back in history. The Khan. The Khan is a musical instrument that's so integral to Laotian society. The spirit of the Khan is kept alive through competitions like the one we're about to see held annually on the 13th of December. Let's take a look at the story of the Khan.
The can was borne witness to centuries of change and development in Laos and always inspires listeners with its lifting sound and upbeat melodies, which prompt people to dance and sing. <laughs> is made of a series of bamboo pipes and is played through a simple mouth organ or reed. The can is an integral part of Lao life and promotes family and social cohesion among all ethnic groups. Even today, the can can be heard across Laos and is enduringly symbolic of folk culture. It is recorded that the can is the oldest of Lao national musical instruments. It has been used since the Lan Sang or meaning elephant's era. It is also believed that the can did exist for over 4,000 years. Now the music of the can will be forever preserved worldwide after being inscribed by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. In early March 2018, UNESCO's Director General Ms. Audrey Azoilai presented a certificate recognizing the music of the can as an intangible form of world heritage to Deputy Prime Minister Son Sai Si Pandon during a visit to Paris. The popularity of the can persists even as more modern instruments tend to dominate the loud music scene. The can is played at national and international events and is always featured at welcoming ceremonies when Laos hosts an ASEAN summit. One music teacher, Nyot Gyeo Gyeo Champa, who is also a can player, said it's great in terms of instrumental music and the music of the can is considered to be the mother of Lao music. The can has pervaded Lao life for centuries and looks sure to continue to do so long into the future. I would like to urge young people to show an interest in this kind of music. It has its own unique beautiful charm and is a Lao tradition that should be preserved. <laughs> The can, the Lao people, and the nation cannot be separated from one another because this music is embodied in everyone's heritage. Late President Kai Suan Pumbihan was not only revered for being a wise leader but also a can musician and was skilled at playing several instruments. So the can is not only played by ordinary people, their national heroes was also fascinated by the instrument. A can is constructed of bamboo with each pipe measuring approximately 5 cm large and 250 centimeters long. There are size variation based on the desired sound range of the instrument. The bamboo is typically one year old when harvested and dried for several weeks, then pierced by a small rod with a variety of cuts and incisions. About two-thirds of the length, a hole is cut where a tongue of silver or a silver-copper alloy is placed. This determines the melody range. 
พราะว่าเฮียเทศแคนนี้นึ่งมาแล้วเป็นน้อยคนเฮ็ดน้อยคนเฮ็ดแล้วอาชีพนี้มันสี่ยาวนานแล้วอันที่สองมามันก็เป็นมันเป็นต้นฉบับของคนลาวเพราะว่ามันเป็นวัฒนธรรมหลักตัวนี้นะเพราะว่าเคนนี้มันหมายความว่าทั่วประเทศนี้คนลาวทั่วประเทศต้องได้ใช้แล้วมันเป็นเครื่องหมายของคนลาวอีก The master can make it within a d a console that allows the player to block or unblock particular holes to vary the sounds of the can. While a can can be made in particular key, once that key is set, it cannot be changed. The other instrument is an orchestra, have to be tuned to the can, and not the other way around. There are four main can forms: a can six to a can eight. The largest of traditional can is the can nine, measuring 18 bamboo pipes and the widest range of tones. Prices range from 600,000 to 700,000 g i b or about 60 to 90 US dollars. s o p r a n o bamboo xylophone. I believe that it is a real identity and soul of Thai music. My father taught me to play the s o p r a n o bamboo xylophone. For the first time when I was seven years old, I realized that today it has become part of my life. t a t j a k s a a 13-year-old boy, is studying at a small school in t r a t Province in eastern Thailand. More than three years ago, Tat's mother moved from a school in Bangkok to serve as director of this school. His father also moved to the same school as a Thai music teacher. Since his father and mother graduated in the field of Thai music, Tat has the greater opportunity than other school children to develop Thai musical skills. Even so. His inspiration in the early days of his soprano bamboo xylophone playing did not come from his parents, but he drew inspiration from something else. My parents took me to watch the movie titled Home r o n g or The o v e n t u r e The movie was about Thai music. The leading actor played the soprano bamboo xylophone. I liked this movie very much and watched it many times. All types of Thai musical instruments have their own identities. As for the soprano bamboo xylophone, it is comparable to the real leader of the band. No matter you create quick or slow rhythm and make heavy or light sound each time, the soprano bamboo xylophone is always the most prominent amidst various instruments. A person who learns to play the soprano bamboo xylophone must have strong wrists. Both the brain and hands must go together, so that the performance will be managed effectively. Learning to play the bamboo xylophone is more difficult than other instruments, as it requires quickness, skills, and various tricks. I believe that if anyone has strong intention, they can learn it like me, although they don't have. The results of his perseverance led to the highest honor in his life. t a t won the first prize of playing the soprano bamboo xylophone for the King's Cup in the category of primary students, 
at a Thai classical music competition in 2016. He takes pride in this success and is determined to continue to perform better and better. Tat has become a source of inspiration for many people interested in playing Thai music, although they do not have much talent. <laughs> Today, the tide of globalization has brought in Western culture that has also changed Thai society to a great deal. Music consumption has also changed, and the Western music has become the mainstream among most consumers in society. A number of people regard Thai music as a cultural asset that is dying. It is also seen as something out of date. Thai music is also regarded as something to be used only in a rite or as a form of entertainment for the older generation. Fortunately, many people have become aware of the value of Thai music. This means that globalization is not the main cause of separating the younger generation from Thai music at all. Thai music is not something unstylish because it is regarded as an international language that everyone can understand. Music is meant to bring about gentleness and friendship. Inheritance is the best way to pass on the story of the identity of the soprano bamboo xylophone from the past to the present and from the older generation to younger and future generations. More importantly, the soprano bamboo xylophone also reflects the roots of our culture. You may also have a touch of its beauty, as I do. special feature from Thailand where we talked to local expert Tat Chaksa who is not only a master in the instrument but also placed by the notion that it is the real soul and identity of Thai music. Indeed, one would argue that the soprano bamboo xylophone is the heart and soul of Thailand. It's beautiful to behold and the music it produces can soothe the mind, body and soul. So the next time you're in Thailand, make sure you catch a local performance of that beautiful instrument. And that wraps up today's show and we hope you've enjoyed our log features and our outfits as much as we've enjoyed putting them on for you. I'm Zala Ismail and I'm Terence Da. Thanks for watching from all of us at Colors of ASEAN. ASEAN.